Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark, I'm your host, and in today's how-to video, we are going to discuss casters and wheels. But I can't do that without bringing on my guest, and that's Marty Wilson from Hamilton, a manufacturer of casters, wheels, carts, and trailers. Welcome, Marty, how are you? Thank you very much for having me. I'll tell you what, we got a lot of wheels here, buddy. What are we gonna talk about today on the program? Well, um, we're going to talk about some of the basic procedures in specifying casters and wheels. Okay, well, where do we start because we got a whole bunch of them. Where do you want to begin? First, it's good to understand some caster basics. Um, if you're going to be replacing casters, you'll mm -hmm. need to know the top plate size. You'll need to know the overall height of the caster. You'll need to know the wheel diameter and the bolt hole pattern. Okay, and you know, otherwise, let's just face it, it won't fit. Everything has to be just right and you want to make sure that it fits. That's right. Okay, what's next? The next thing we need to do is determine what capacity caster we're going to require for, for each caster. And that's basically you take the amount of your maximum load and divide it by the number of casters that you're going to be using. Simple mathematics. If I got a thousand pounds that I want to carry, I got to figure out what kind of surface for the wheel that will carry that capacity. Kind of simple, right? Right. Okay, good. I got it so far. The next thing we need to do is determine what wheel material is going to be best suited for the application. And now how do you do that? Because we do have a lot of them here. Uh, the most versatile wheel material that we have is our polyurethane material. Uh, polyurethane comes in several different flavors and it's designed to do different tasks. Is there like a real common wheel, one of these that people choose more often than others? That's the 95A industry standard polyurethane wheel. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really nice floor protection. It comes in with nice rollability, uh, abrasion resistance, and it's relatively cost effective. The next thing uh, we have is our, our 82 durometer poly soft material. It rolls really easily because it's a, a really high rebound material. It's really bouncy. All right. uh, it repels foreign objects and debris from, uh, from the floor. But what if we need more capacity in a polyurethane wheel? Where do we go next? Then we have the 70D poly for you, which is a harder, quite a bit harder wheel material. It comes in with, with uh, about 30 percent higher capacity and, um, and they roll easier. We've recently introduced the highest performing polyurethane wheel that, that's available. Okay, and what is the name of that animal? The 95A poly. The number one enemy of polyurethane is heat. All right. And as a wheel rolls, it flexes, and when it flexes, it builds up heat. And this wheel doesn't build up heat, so at higher speeds and continuous operations, it will extend the life of your caster. Wow. Well, I, I've heard you talk about rolling several times. I mean, I know it's got to be important, but just how important is it? When things are manually pushed, ergonomics are always important. Right. So the easier you can make uh, your, your material to move through the facility, the, the more you're going to help your, your workers avoid back injuries yeah, and muscle strains. It's going to be strains. easier on yourself, isn't it? Absolutely. What other wheel materials do we have here on the table? Well, mold-on rubber has is, is been around for a long time. This is a mold-on rubber on cast iron. Okay. Uh, we also have a TPR, which is a thermal plastic rubber on a plastic or polypropylene center. And those are really nice rubber tires at a low cost. Okay. What else do we have? Pneumatic tires, semi-pneumatic tires, just to name a few. They offer a lot of uh, floor protection quiet operation and, and they're really cushioning for, for delicate cargo. It's kind of obvious that we've got the different wheels, but you've got to give something. There's got to be a trade factor in here somewhere, right? With rubber tires, you, you, get, you lose a, a, quite a bit of capacity and they're not quite as durable. What else? Uh, the next things uh, we're going to talk about are our hard tread class of wheels. We mm -hmm. have our forged steel wheel. All right. Uh, cast iron wheel. That is actually a cast iron V groove wheel. Cast iron right here. Yeah, that okay. wheel is is designed for track applications. That's uh, kind of straight heavy. line moving. All right. What else do we have? Uh, the next thing we do have is a phenolic wheel. We have our our nylon material. Uh, nylon is a really high impact, high capacity material. Offers some floor protection, but it comes in at a, a bit higher cost. So break that down a little bit here. I mean, you know, we're talking about forged steel, nylon, phenolic. You know, tell us what's going on. Well, our phenolic wheel uh, is 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 right here, and that is one of the more cost-effective materials. It's a really hard material. It's uh, industry standard, been around forever. Uh, not quite as durable, but it uh, uh, you know, carries a lot of capacity. Doesn't like moisture too much. You've demonstrated how the caster dimensions, uh, capacity, wheel materials are critical factors. What else do you have to think about when you're selecting a caster? Because all we're talking about is a wheel here. All right. Uh, wheels can transform based on what type of bearing you put in there. Uh, we started using precision maintenance free sealed ball bearings uh, a while back and it's mm -hmm. become a really nice feature of our products. We also have this 
standard straight roller bearing. The industry standard has been around for, for a long time. And right. they do, do a nice job, but they need to be well maintained. Okay. Uh, you also have your tapered bearing. It, it uh, handles some of the tough jobs like, like higher speeds, side thrust. The tapered bearing is a good, good way to go. Now, obviously, there's a lot of tools in your toolbox here. So uh, what about optional equipment available for your products? What else have you got? We have uh, anything ranging from some swivel seals. Something like right here? A little swivel you here? could okay. seal that up so no dirt could get in there. We okay. have uh, the most popular is probably the, the foot brake, which is on this black phenolic caster here. And uh, it simply it depresses and it will keep your, your cart stable on, on a flat surface. Another is the swivel lock, which actually will transform a swivel caster into a rigid caster benefits of that is you can have max maneuverability with your cart and then when you need to take it for a long distance you can lock these in and it will help facilitate that, that long travel. Any final thoughts you got for us there Marty? Material handling can get expensive and, and casters are a very very cost effective way to move material through your facility. Whatever application you have from a 200 pound caster to a 40,000 pound caster, Hamilton has the product you need, the service you need, and the support you need. Thank you, Marty. We appreciate all your time here My today. My pleasure. Awesome. If you have any questions, if you need more information, don't forget to contact the Motion Industries branch at your nearest location. Wear personal protective equipment, maybe when you're replacing stuff, just in case you never know when something might fly in your eye, so uh, wear your glasses, okay? Hopefully this will help with your practical applications. And uh, don't forget to look for other how-to videos from Motion Industries with me as your host, Tom Clark. And you know, uh, casters wouldn't work if uh, we didn't have them on the bottom of this display like this. So we'll see you later.